Hi, my name is Stephanie Downey Toledo. Thank you for tuning in to this first module on a series about reading development. Over the next 10 minutes or so, what I want to discuss is what does it really mean to know a language? It's, it's an important frame to start before we go into really discussing how a child becomes a reader. So what does it mean to you to know a language? People have a rich, implicit understanding of the language that they learned first. If English is your first language, or if you're highly proficient in English, try using your unconscious linguistic knowledge for this next activity. I really want to put you in the shoes of some of our students. So imagine that the developers of a new software package want advice on what to name their product, and they come to you. This is their idea. Take a moment. What do you think about their recommendation? What feedback would you want to give them? Do you think it's a good name? Why? Why not? What might you suggest? So you may have started to think that perhaps this isn't a great name because GLMKR doesn't follow some of the basic English patterns. First of all, the sequence of two consonants that begin this word does occur in English, but it's never followed by a third consonant. And English speakers would find this very difficult to pronounce unless we inserted some vowel sounds. Also, the spelling would probably you know, could, could use some changing, since in English we usually include symbols for word vowel sounds, uh, even though not all languages do. So perhaps adding some vowels could make it more pronounceable and, and marketable. So any ideas on perhaps what you might tell the, the folks creating this product? What might you recommend? Perhaps goal maker or any other idea that you had? So it's important to think about what do we know about a language that leads us to, to understand and the, the, the conclusions that you came to when you knew that Glunker was not going to be great to market their product. It's because you have a deep understanding of English. But not all of our students will bring that deep understanding of English to the table when we, we start to learn uh, and teach them how to read. So successful reading draws on a vast understanding of the structure of English, the conventions for written English, and our students who are English language learners or come from culturally and linguistically diverse homes, they're still acquiring language and they don't necessarily have all this knowledge about English just yet. Because so much of what we understand about language is unconscious, Teachers can sometimes find it difficult to understand why reading can be so hard for our students. So it's so important that we pause and try to put ourselves in the shoes of, of a student who may not bring the same background knowledge to the classroom that, that perhaps we brought. So a nice way to put this uh, by a wonderful uh, linguist at Harvard, Catherine Snow, she says, fish are the last to discover water. And those of us who are skilled with language and literacy are the last to discover how difficult reading can be. So as we go through the modules, and, and if you join me through the rest of this series, I want you to think of this as your challenge. Put yourself in the position of a child with a speech and language impairment, or the position of a, a child who is, um, their first language is a language other than English, and, or even a dialect different than what's spoken in our classrooms around the country. And really try to use that as a frame as we learn about how to teach our kids to read and certainly as we return to the classroom or the therapy room and go forth in teaching our students how to read. Thank you.